Hey folks, in today's video, we're going to be looking at what databases are and what you as a product manager need to know about databases. Now, the concept of databases is a pretty complex one. And so I'm not going to put everything into a single video. You can think of this one as say the part one of the entire database series. And in part one, we're going to be looking at some basic definitions of databases, focus on what are the different types of databases that exist. And very briefly, very briefly, just touch upon what are some of the basic differences between the two. Before we begin, if you love the content that you've been putting out on the channel over the last few months, do make sure to subscribe to the channel. This will let us know how much you enjoy what we are putting out and will also help us prepare for more such videos in the future. So jumping in, what exactly is a database? In a very simple sense, a database is an organized collection of information that is stored electronically. Now this information could be structured or it could be unstructured. By structured, what I mean is that the information is arranged in the form of a table, in the form of rows and columns like you would see in an Excel sheet. Let's take an example and see where the database could be used. Now, let's say you're running an e-commerce company. Your customers are able to come to the site and able to purchase some product from the site and then possibly even track their order. Now, in order for you to store, say, the customer information, you're going to need some sort of a table. Now, this customer information could be the customer ID, which is the unique customer ID per customer, the first name of the customer, the last name of the customer, the address, and let's say the phone number. Now, all of these details would sit inside, say, a particular table. Now, you'd also want to store what is called as the order information. Order information as in order ID or the order number, the customer ID, which is the customer who's actually purchased this particular order or placed this particular order. Then you would have some information around what are the total items in that particular order. And then finally, the total cost of that order. So now in order for you to store this information, you would again need, say, a table. Now, all of these tables put together is essentially what you call as, say, a database. Now, depending on the use case that you have or the product that you're trying to build, you can choose which database could possibly work better for you. Now, the question you might ask is, when should I choose which? Now, my answer to that would be, it depends. Let's take a look at the different types of databases that exist. One of the big categorization of databases is around what is called as a relational database and a non-relational database. Relational databases would look something like this. The data is stored in the form of tables, meaning rows, and columns and each table has something called as a primary key which is a mandatory column and could possibly have something called as a foreign key now what is exactly a primary key now if we go back to the e-commerce example that we had in order for you to store the customer information within a certain table you had to have one unique identifier for every record meaning that you had to have one unique identifier for every customer who actually places that particular order now in our case it's going to be the customer id now, the reason why you want to have a primary key is because it's going to help you a lot in terms of easy retrieval and easy updation of data. For example, imagine you want to extract the customer information for a customer named John. Now, if you didn't have, say, a unique customer ID, and let's say you had two customers by the name John, then you don't really know which information you need to pick. The same applies to updating the data. If you want to update, say, the address of a customer who's named John, but then you don't have the customer ID or the customer ID is not unique, then you don't know which record to actually update. Now, what exactly is then a foreign key? Now, a foreign key essentially is used to map two different tables based on, say, a common column or a set of columns. Now, why is a foreign key really needed? Now, let's say you have a customer name and using this customer name, you want to extract the orders placed by this particular customer. Now, let's say the customer name is John. Now, what you would do is you would go to the table one. You would then see who are those customers who are named John then pick all the customer IDs associated with that, use those customer IDs, map them to the second table, which is the orders table, get the corresponding list of order IDs based on the matching customer IDs, and then get all of the order details that you need. That is why you need a foreign key. So a foreign key essentially helps in mapping or matching two different tables in a relational database. Now the term relational comes in because you're able to relate one table to the other using the keys that we just spoke about. Now, in direct comparison, non-relational databases usually do not have any relation between the tables. And instead of storing the data in a tabular format in the form of rows and columns, they usually store data in the form of a key value pair or a JSON object. A JSON object or a key value pair would look something like this. If you notice here, the customer name, which in our previous relational database we saw as a column name, is now what is called as a key because anything that falls below the colon or before the colon is called as a key. And anything that falls after the colon is called as the value for that key. And each of those records that you saw in the relational database is essentially what is called as one object. With non-relational databases, we cannot relate one table or one object to the other, hence making them what we call as unstructured data. 
So that is actually the biggest difference between the two databases. Now you might be asking, how do I query data from the two databases? For relational database, you can use SQL, which is structured query language. SQL queries would look something like this. Now you don't have to worry too much about why they look this way and the syntax of it all. I'm gonna be putting out another video specifically on SQL queries and writing SQL queries. All you need to do is just take a brief glance at how this essential syntax looks like. And then for non-relational databases, the language that you need to use will depend on who is the provider of that particular database. For example, MongoDB is a pretty common and a pretty well-known provider of a non-relational database. And so their queries would look something like this. If you wanted to fetch all the details about a customer, whose customer ID was equal to one, then in SQL, you would write the following. You would say, select star from customer where CID equal to one. Now the same query, when you translate it to a non-relational database and you want to query from that particular database, then you would again write it as db.customer.find CID is one. So there is a small difference in how you type. Uh, you can't really say one is easier or better than the other. Both have their pros and cons. If it is a little bit confusing to you, don't really worry too much about it because I'll be making a separate video on how to query for data in itself. Now lastly, some examples of relational and non-relational database. For relational database, you have PostgreSQL, MySQL, Oracle, and Microsoft SQL Server. And for non-relational database, you've got MongoDB, you've got Cassandra, you've got Redis, and a few others. So that's essentially the short introduction to databases. Hope this wasn't too overwhelming. In the next set of videos, I'm going to be getting more in-depth into databases in itself, and we'll be covering a few more topics that you need to know as a PM. And so until the next one, bye-bye.